first time in our three outdoor uh, worship scheduled Sundays that we've been able to be outside. <laughs> Notice, gorgeous. Those of you who are joining us online, great to have you with us. So, numbers of announcements. I will begin with your announcement page in your bulletin. Today is the Lemonade Ginger Snap Day. That is a fundraiser for who? Crystal Ray. Crystal Ray, Christ the King Lutheran. That's a mission partner congregation that we have on the border in El Paso. So, please notice the table and uh, check that out. Tuesday, date night. Painting with a twist, notice the details, you can sign up on the board. Senior social is on Wednesday, annual picnic coming up in two weeks, notice details, and then the um, uh, La Puente hygiene bags, that's happening, please notice on the bottom of your bulletins or uh, uh, pages there. Um, we're putting together bags for those people who are migrant workers in the poor. <coughs> poorest county of our state, and uh, that's in the, um, what do you call that county? San, San Luis Valley. San Luis Valley, thank you. <laughs> then an update, uh, oh, and then uh, open up your bulletins, there is a update on the NALC convocation, and uh, lots of things that happened, you'll be hearing more about that, but um, Please read that over, but don't do it during the sermon. <laughs> Updates on people. Dwayne Wagner's mom died on Thursday. Carol, 88, was with us numbers of months last year. And if you saw her picture, you'd go, I'll, I, I, I have seen her. Um, so she died suddenly at 88, and um, they are in Kansas than for the funeral. So we pray for Duane and Pam and their family. And then John Summerfield uh, and Paige have been in Maryland. Maryland, thank you, to care for his father who was under hospice care. His father, Irwin Irvin, died yesterday around noon, very peacefully, and so uh, the funeral will be this week. So we pray for them also. Today, also in our prayers, we're going to be praying for J.L., who is Sonny Wilson's nephew, who is serving our country, I believe, in the Army or Air Force. Guess where? Afghanistan. Guess where in Afghanistan? You got it. So we will be praying for him. Those are the announcements we worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. I invite you to open up your book to page 3 in your setting for booklet. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. 
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The prayer of the day is in your bulletin. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. 
pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merit of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward. Son, Jesus Christ, who came down so that, Lord, we can grasp a hold of you just as you wrap your arms around us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank you for your love. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can do that.
The first reading is from Proverbs 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her tables. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter five. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down, from, came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them, just as the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Jesus speaks stark words, even shocking or offensive. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood. Hard to hear. We will look deep, more deeply at them and what they mean as we go back through this chapter 6 of John to give it some context. It begins with the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus sees the crowd and then he asks a question to his disciples. Where are we to buy food for all these people to eat? Philip says to him, six months' wages wouldn't be enough to buy food and bread for them to eat. And then Andrew comes along and says, well, there is this boy over here who has his lunch, five loaves, two fish, but what are they among so many? 
And then you know the story. Jesus takes those five loaves and two fish. He blesses them, breaks them, and gives them. And 5,000 people all eat and are filled. And 12 baskets full of leftovers are collected. Several weeks ago, we reflected on that text and realized Paul's words in Ephesians are so appropriate. Now to him who by the power at work within us is, what's the word? Able. Able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or imagine. The feeding of the 5,000 certainly fits that. Well, the crowds are very happy to be fed, and they have a brief election, and they decide that Jesus should be their king. And they're about to take him by force, so Jesus goes out by himself up to the mountains to pray. While the disciples get in the boat, and they go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Later, Jesus comes down off the hill and joins them by walking on the water. And they all end up in Capernaum. The next day the crowd gets up, they look around, they don't see Jesus, and wonder where he is, knowing that the disciples have taken the boat, but they don't know about Jesus. And so they take a boat across the Sea of Galilee to Capernaum. Capernaum, remember, is the base of Jesus' operation. Who lives in Capernaum? Yes, Peter. And Peter stays with, uh, Jesus stays with Peter. Capernaum is a half a day's walk from Nazareth. Keep that in mind. The people find Jesus, and they end up asking five questions. The first question, Rabbi, how did you get here? Jesus doesn't tell them he walked upon the water. Rather, he simply says, you are looking for bread to eat. You're looking for a free lunch again. And then he says, don't look for bread that will go stale but rather look for the bread that endures, that lasts, until eternal life. You're going to hear eternal life over and over again. We'll come back to that. They then ask another question. What work should we be doing so that we'll be doing the work of God? Jesus simply says, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one that the Father sent. By the way, who is that? Jesus. It's Jesus. Then they ask another question. Well, if we are to believe in you, what sign are you going to do for us? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. Now, remind me, what was it that Jesus just did the day before? He fed 5,000 with how much? Five loaves, two fish. Mm -hmm. It seems like quite a sign to me, but the people are saying, well, what sign can you do for us that we might believe? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. Jesus says, I want you to know it's not Moses who gave you the bread, but it's my Father who gives you the bread from heaven. Notice the difference. It's not simply past tense. It's what God's doing now. The people then say, well, not only what sign are you giving, but give us this bread always. Do you remember what Jesus says? I am the bread of life. Those who eat this bread, those who come to me, will never be hungry, and those who believe in me will never thirst. The bread that Jesus is talking about isn't simply that which we fill our stomachs. It isn't simply the staff of life that we need to live, to breathe, to move, 
Rather, the bread he's talking about is deeper. He is the bread that gives life, and not only life, but eternal life. Jesus will add, you have seen me, but you don't believe. This is the will of the Father, that all may see the Son and believe in him and have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. For the fourth time, the people begin to ask questions. They complain to one another because Jesus has said, I am the bread of life. They say, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know him? Don't we know his parents, his mom and dad? How can he say, I came down from heaven? Jesus says to them, whoever believes has eternal life. A little review. So, in this text, Jesus says, I am what? I am the bread of life. And where does he come from? He comes from heaven. And what is it that he gives? Eternal life. When we hear the words eternal life, what do you think? I think generally we think living a long time living forever, living eternally. It's what happens when we die. Eternal life is something distant that goes on and on. And so we think of quantity of life, long time. Jesus says, don't look for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life. Endless, eternal, everlasting, really a long time, forever quantity. But Jesus also gives us another sense of what eternal life is. Not only quantity, but do you know what the other word is? Quality. There is a quality to life in Jesus and when we are in him that can be found nowhere else. Jesus makes it clear that we don't have to die to have eternal life, <clears throat> that it starts before death. Jesus says, whoever believes has eternal life. Notice that, present tense, not past. Has, not will have, presently. He says, those who believe in me have eternal life now. Starts now, never ends. Even death can't ruin it. According to Jesus, eternal life doesn't simply start when we die. It's not simply living a long time. It's not simply a quantity. Rather, it's also a quality of life. Life in him. The life he gives now that goes forever. His peace, his hope, the confidence that we have and the assurance that we are never alone, that we don't walk this earth simply by ourselves, that we don't face trials and difficulties on our own. He is with us. His promise, I will not leave you orphans. I will come. I am with you. Those who believe in me, Jesus says, abide in me, and I in them. They live in me, and I in them. They remain in me, and I in them. They live in me. It's a qualitative difference. Eternal life, not simply far off, distant, something that happens when we die and then goes on forever, yes, but more. It's not simply a reward, a goal that we strive for. It's not some product that we hope for. But it's a person who comes to give us life as God has always intended. And he invites us to know him and trust him and live in him and he in us. And eternal life begins now. 
Because Jesus is the eternal one. He is the eternal life. And so he says, come, know me. Come, be a part of me. Come, eat me. Now when he starts talking about such things, the people in the crowd get grossed out. <coughs> How is it that we receive him? Well, he is the bread of life. Hear it again. Those who believe have eternal life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, that's true, but they died. Those who eat this bread that came down from heaven will not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. For the bread that I give them is my flesh. The crowd once again struggles. Their fifth and final question. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Basically they all say, ew. They're grossed out. What they think is cannibalism. It's offensive. And Jesus hits it head on. Truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Where is he coming from? What's he saying? It's important to know that if you read the Gospels, how many Gospels are there? Four. The first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In the night in which he was betrayed, what did Jesus do? He took bread. He blessed. He broke. He gave. It's the Last Supper. And what is it that Jesus says when he gives them the bread? This is my body. And what does it say, what does he say when he gives them the wine? This is my blood. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, it's in Luke. Guess where it's not? John. The night before he died, Jesus and the disciples, according to John, get together for the Passover meal. Jesus and his disciples eat. He also washes their feet. But you do not hear in chapter 13 of John, this is my body, this is my blood. You don't hear he took the bread and blessed and broke and gave. It's not there. Where is it? It's chapter 6. This is where it is in John's Gospel. Hear it again. Jesus will say, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread, whoever eats me, will live forever. For the bread that I give for the world is my flesh. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. For my flesh is true food. And my blood is true drink. Whoever eats me, says Jesus, will live in me and I in them. Who is this bread? The simple answer is, it's Jesus. The living bread that came down from heaven. The bread that gives life to the world. Eternal life, not simply something starting when we die, something we hope for, something that goes on and on forever, but rather a new life that is in Him. And how is it that we can be in Him? Because He chooses to be in us. Whoever eats me, says Jesus, will live forever. It's not simply quantity, long time, but quality. Coming to know Him. Coming to trust Him. Coming to know His peace, His confidence, His assurance. No matter what happens, I am with you. I walk beside you. I am in you. Whoever eats me 
shall live forever. In your bulletin, you'll notice in the uh, center, or in the inside, on the uh, bottom, the whole chapter ends with these words. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When the crowd, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter asked him, or answered him, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. Have you heard those words before? Yes, of course, we just sang them. Where was it? It's the Alleluia verse. Nearly every Sunday we sing them. Alleluia, Lord, where would we go? To whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have the words that give us hope and assurance, not just simply for the future, but now. In fact, you not only have the words, but you are eternal life. Not something simply that we hope for in the future, but something, someone, that we are coming to know now. Eternal life is not simply a product that we hope to have. Eternal life is the person of Jesus Christ who loves us, who is with us, and who makes us new. I, says Jesus, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Amen. I invite you to turn to your setting for booklet, page 7. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we pray today, we also have another person who is deployed, and that is Jake Kress. Uh, he has been in Jordan. His squadron has been activated to fly 1,000 German soldiers out of where? Where in Afghanistan? You got it. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, there are times that you speak words that make us shudder. It's difficult to receive them. It somehow goes against our grain. They make us uncomfortable. And yet there are times that you want to shake us up, get us to think and get us our attention. I am the bread of life. Unless you eat me and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Lord, help us remember that the life that you give not only goes on forever, but it starts here and now. Thank you for coming to us, not simply waiting somewhere far off for us to climb to you, but that you have been born into this world, the Word made flesh. You have grown up. You have known the difficulties we face, the hunger and the thirst, the worries. You have laid your hands on many to make them whole. And then you chose to give your very life that we might live. Lord, this day we come to your table. And as you offer yourself to us, your very flesh and blood in this bread and wine, give us faith to see you. Help us to come to know and trust you that your life may indeed be in us more and more, and we in you. Lord, let your life that is eternal begin now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for the nation of Haiti as they have experienced now another terrible earthquake. For those whose homes have been destroyed or businesses, for those who have lost loved ones who are injured, in the midst of chaos, more chaos, we pray for your mercy, your help, your order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Didi, our missionary in the Congo, and his wife, we pray that you would continue to strengthen and guide them, protect them against all evil, and reflect your life and light through everything they say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those deployed, for Brittany and Kyle, and for JL, and for Jake in Kabul, we pray for your protection, for your presence, for your wisdom, for your guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who grieve, especially Duane and John and their family. Sustain them, comfort them, walk with them in these days and weeks. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for those who yearn for your hand of strength and healing, we pray for Sue and Michelle, for Jean and Tom, Dwayne, Jan, Josh, and for those that we mention silently. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share God's peace in whatever way your neighbor is comfortable. Now have you stay standing. I figured I'd give you a little more time sitting, that way you'd be have more strength standing. Our offering prayer is on page nine. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. so that those who believe in him might not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith, as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, remembering me. We pray the Lord's Prayer as printed in your book. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we commune today, I invite this group to make a loop here. When they are finished, I invite the rest of you to come down the center aisle, always keeping your hands. Now, some of you are cheating on this. I, 
open up your hands, and then some of you do the clan thing. But keep them open, receive the bread, go either side, our assisting ministers will place a glass that is filled in front of you, eat and drink. When you're finished, place your empty glass in the basket and return to your place. Please be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Remember what he says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray in your mercy you would strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The heavens are telling the glory of God and all Shouting for joy, come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Sing for, sing for the sun, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord and His rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for, praise for the wind that blows through the trees, it sees my storm. The gentlest breeze, they blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing. Blesses our crops, so all the earth yields from death into life. Her mystery reveals, bring forth in joy. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest and play in the field three times. And sing, sing to the glory of, and sing, sing to the glory of, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.